Hello everyone, my name is Rahul. In the previous video, we had discussed about class Animalia. In this video, we are going to discuss about this NCRT chart which talks about all the phylums in one place. This chart should be your go-to chart if you are going for any exam, whether it is a competitive exam, whether it is a practical or a viva or a theory exam. Because this chart will help you to revise Animal Kingdom very quickly. Now let us dive into this chart as you can see on this side we have the phylum we have the phylums and their features so we will start with porifera now see the first phylum it is a cellular level of body organization because it is the least advanced phylum next two phyla are tissue level of organization and next from platyhelminths we have organ and organ system level of organization so for this feature you do not have to remember it separately for each phylum for first phylum you can remember it is cellular then there is a little advancement for the next two phylum celentrata and nidaria or tenophora we have tissue level of organization in fact, you do not even need to remember for both of them because we have already discussed that celentrates and tenophores, they share a lot of common features. They are almost similar except for a few two or three differences. So they both have tissue level of organization and from platyhelminths, there is starting of organ level of organization. Some platyhelminths which are very advanced, they may exhibit organ system level of organization. But if in a question, you have to mark one answer whether platyhelminths have an organ or organ system level of organization. You will mark organ level of organization because most of the platyhelminths have an organ level of body organization. From Escalminthes, the organ system level of organization starts and it continues down to the last phylum. So you have to remember only one, two and three and four. Only four phylum you have to remember the level of organization and the rest you do not need to remember because from Escalminthes, once the organ system level starts it does not revert back to its primitive form. Now talking about symmetry in Porifera it says various symmetry. Why? We studied in the video on Porifera that Porifera's are asymmetrical. Now during their development during certain stages they may exhibit symmetry they may exhibit bilateral symmetry they may exhibit radial symmetry which is why the term is various. However, if you have to mark one single answer, you will mark that poriferans are asymmetrical. The next two phyla are radially symmetrical. Again, you do not need to remember the radial symmetry in two phylum. You have only you have to remember only that celentrates have radial symmetry. Tenophores, because they are similar to celentrates, they also have radial symmetry. Next, all the all phylums have a bilateral symmetry. Again, there is one exception which is phylum echinodermata where radial symmetry it is present in adults and bilateral symmetry it is present in larva. This is a special phylum which you will have to remember. Otherwise, all other phylum starting from platyhelminthes you can mark as bilateral symmetry. Talking about coelom, the first four phyla are acelomates. The first four phyla are acelomates. Then only Escalminthes, only Escalminthes is a pseudocelomate. So to remember this better, you can remember that Escalminthes are pseudocelomate. You have to only remember that Escalminthes are pseudocelomates. So automatically all the phyla before Escalminthes are acelomates and all the phyla after Escalminthes become coelomates. So See how easy it is. You only have to remember about Escalminthes that they are pseudocelomates. The phyla before Escalminthes, they are acelomates and the phyla after Escalminthes, they are coelomates. Talking about segmentation, segmentation is a bit challenging to remember. However, you can remember that there are only three phyla, only three phyla where segmentation is present. Analytes, arthropods and chordates. Annelids, arthropods and chordates, they show segmentation. So you only have to remember these three phylums, annelids, arthropods and chordates. 
that they show segmentation rest or phyla are unsegmented you can easily mark rest all phyla as unsegmented now talking about one more characteristic which is not mentioned here is germ layers germ layers whether triploblastic or diploblastic so for this you can remember the first two phyla are diploblastic i am saying first two phyla because tenophores and cilentrata they are similar that is why i am considering for the time being as single entity so diplo means two and so first two are diploblastic rest all phyla starting from platyhelminths they are triploblastic this is an easy way to remember this talking about digestive system you only have to remember one phylum that is ascalminthes ascalminthes they have a complete digestive system if you learn this it automatically means that all the phylum all the phyla after ascalminthes will have a complete digestive system and all the phyla before ascalminthes they have a incomplete digestive system and porifera you can remember that the digestive system is absent digestive system is absent so if you only remember about ascalminthes you can easily mark about any other phylum again come to circulatory system you only have to remember that circulatory system is present in annelida circulatory system is present in annelida once you remember this it automatically means that all the phyla before annelida they do not have a circulatory system and all the phyla after annelida they will have a circulatory system so you will not have to remember each of them separately you can only remember that annelida possesses a circulatory system all the phyla before do not have a circulatory system all the phyla after they have a circulatory system again for respiratory system you will remember about arthropoda arthropods they have a well developed respiratory system which may be book gills book lungs tracheal system it automatically means that all the phyla before they do not possess a respiratory system and all the phyla after they also they possess a respiratory system so if you only remember about arthropods you will remember about the respiratory system of each other phylums see next about the distinctive features so in each phyla there are two or three distinctive features that you cannot forget that you cannot afford to forget for example porifera the word comes from pores so pores you will have to remember and water canal system you will also have to remember in cilentrata or nidaria the term nidaria comes from nidoblast so you will have to remember that they have stinging cells or nidoblast and tenophores because they are known as comb jellies why because they have comb plates and nidoblasts are absent in place of nidoblast they have other cells known as colloblast so the function of nidoblast in uh, tenophores is performed by colloblast platyhelminths platy means flat helminths mean worm so they have a flat body and there is presence of suckers we had seen that in case of fluke there is presence of suckers which help them to adhere to the intestinal wall so and they are mostly parasites they are mostly parasites ascalminthes ascalminth ascal means round helminth means worm so they are also known as round worm their body is round and elongated there is it is circular in cross section and they are also found as mostly parasites annelids the word annelid means ring like so their body is ring like and you have to remember that they have segmentation they exhibit true segmentation which is known as metamerism they exhibit true segmentation which is known as metamerism next arthropoda arthro means joint poda means legs so you have to remember that they have joint appendages and they have a specialized exoskeleton specialized exoskeleton which is made up of chitin which is made up of chitin next mollusca mollusca means soft bodied animals their external skeleton has a shell their body is soft but the body because it is soft to protect the soft body it is covered by a shell so as soon as you will remember shell the word mantle should come to your mind because shell is secreted by mantle once you remember mantle you will all automatically remember about the other body divisions that is visceral hump foot head you will all automatically remember this 
in case of echinodermata echino means spiny and derma means skin so these are the animals which have a spiny skin spiny skin they have spines on their body so most important characteristic that you have to remember is water vascular system water vascular system and why is radial symmetry mentioned here in the distinctive feature because you see all the phyla before this phylum echinodermata have bilateral symmetry and suddenly there is appearance of radial symmetry so a primitive feature appears in between the advanced features so which is why it is placed here in a distinctive feature but you have to remember that radial symmetry is present in adults but the larva they show bilateral symmetry next hemichordata these are worm like the word hemichordata is a misnomer hemi means half chordata means chordate so the word basically means half chordates but we know that they are not at all chordates they are classified as a chordata they are not classified as chordates they are non chordates so they have a worm like body and proboscis collar and trunk you will have to remember that this is their special feature proboscis collar and trunk proboscis you already know it is also used for excretion and osmoregulation proboscis is also used for excretion and osmoregulation now chordata in chordata we had in chordata we have vertebrates and non vertebrates vertebrates and non vertebrates in vertebrates we had pisces and we had pisces and tetrapoda this we have already discussed in our last video and in non vertebrates there were two subphylums known as urochordata and cephalochordata this classification is very important this classification is very important and you will always remember this you will always revise this classification before going for any exam whether competitive whether theory whether practical or viva examination so special feature they have a notochord which is why they are known as chordates notochord is a mesodermally derived structure around which the nervous system develops and nervous system arranges itself it is very important the hollow nerve cord it is presented dorsally and heart is ventral the nerve cord is dorsal and heart is usually ventral in case of chordates they have gill slits gill slits they may be continuously present throughout their life or always present or they may be replaced by lungs as happens in some chordates so at some point of their life they will show the presence of gill slits and they either have limbs or they have fins limbs is present in tetrapoda and fins are seen in cyclostomes and fishes urochordates and cephalochordates they do not show either fins or limbs however most of the animals in this group in chordates will show limbs or fins so with this we finish off with this discussion of this ncert table i have told you about how to remember various characteristics easily see you in next video